Welcome back to the State of Charge Garage, where we are currently reviewing the Wallbox Pulsar Plus. But that's not why we're here today. We're here to talk Porsche Taycan 4S DC fast charging. Now, a few days ago, we did a 70 mile an hour highway range test for the Porsche Taycan 4S. And when we finished up, the intention was to then record a full DC fast charge session. Unfortunately, either the car or the charging station didn't want to comply with our requests. When I plugged in, the most I could get was 53 kilowatts. So back home we came, I called Electrify America. They said that there seems to be nothing wrong with that station that I plugged into, but since there are two 350 kilowatt DC fast chargers at that location, that why don't I try it on the one next to it? which is what I did the very next day, and voila, we had success. Now, I recorded the entire charging session. Um, we're gonna go over that in a few minutes, but I wanna explain a little bit how we did this test first. Now, the Taycan is very sensitive to temperature as far as DC fast charge rate. It can accept up to 270 kilowatts if the battery temperature is the perfect condition temperature, which is about 31 degrees Celsius or 88 degrees Fahrenheit. When I took it to the Electrify America charging station, I did precondition the battery, but it only got up to 74 degrees Fahrenheit. So it was not at the optimal charging temperature. Now I knew this going in and I kind of, I could have said it so it was the perfect temperature, but there's plenty of tests out there already in videos online where you see people recording it at the perfect temperature. Yeah, the Taycan pulls the 270 kilowatts. I did that myself in Europe last year when we were on the media drive. But I wanted to see in the super cold weather, it was actually snowing when I did, when I did the, temper, the uh, uh, DC fast charge test also. What would the average person expect if they pull it? And the battery isn't stone cold, but it's not the perfect temperature either. And that's what we did. Now, we need to talk a little bit about charging profile in addition to maximum charging capabilities. Now, people love to throw around the maximum charge rate of EVs. The Taycan can accept 270 kilowatts. The Tesla Model 3 can accept 250 kilowatts. Uh, you know, there's plenty of cars out there like the Audi e-tron that can accept 150 kilowatts. But the, the problem is that doesn't tell the whole story. You have to look at the charging curve. EVs don't accept their maximum charge rate for the entire time they're charging. Quite often, it's a very small window of the charging. It could be as little as 10% of the charging, and then it starts ramping down. And how aggressively that ramp down is really determines how long the car takes to charge on a DC fast charger. The Porsche Taycan is better than any other electric car available today as far as the charging profile. It holds high charging rates all the way through the charging up to over 90%. And as you're gonna see, we recorded this, this entire session. When I finished charging, I unplugged at 90%. The car was still accepting 90 kilowatts. That is fantastic for such a high state of charge. So we're gonna jump over to that now. I'm I recorded the whole session. We're gonna talk a little bit about what was going on. But before we get into that, don't forget, please click the subscribe button and tap that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming charging content here on State of Charge. So I pulled into a 350 kilowatt DC fast charger with 5% state of charge and 37 minutes later. So we just finished charging up the Porsche Taycan 4S at an Electrify America charging station. We went from 5% state of charge up to 90% state of charge in 37 minutes. Now, we didn't have optimal charging conditions because it's pretty cold, as you can see, it's snowing out today. The battery was only about 73, 74 degrees when we plugged in. The Taycan likes the battery to be about 88 degrees for it to receive its full power. It's highly dependent on battery temperature, how much power you can pump into electric vehicle batteries. And the Taycan seems to be ex extremely sensitive to that, even more so than maybe some other electric vehicles because it charges at such a high rate. The Taycan can accept up to 270 kilowatts. We didn't get close to that today. When we plugged in at 5%, we were taking in about 140 kilowatts. We got up to right around 200 kilowatts um, before it started ramping down. Now, even under ideal conditions, the Taycan only accepts its 
full 270 kilowatts till it's somewhere around 22, 23%. Then it starts ramping down. And that's what we saw here today with this. Once we got around um, uh, mid-20s, the, 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 the state of charge wouldn't climb any higher than 200 kilowatts. Uh, but still, 37 minutes, pretty good. I'll take that on a long road trip any day, only about a half an hour. You can get back up to 90%. Now, quite often, people will only charge to, say, 80%. If you're on a long road trip, you wouldn't want to really hang out much longer than 80% unless you needed to for that range. And that's why I kept this thing plugged in until 90%, just to give people a little bit of a wider view on the charging curve and how long it takes. For my dollar, 37 minutes ain't bad to get it from 5% to 90%. We'll now take a look. I recorded the whole charging session, so we'll take a look at it and I'll comment in the background. It only takes the Tycom one minute to reach speeds of 150 kilowatts. The power then gradually ramps up to a peak of 200 kilowatts and holds it between 23% and 28% state of charge. That's when the Tycon begins ramping down. And once the vehicle reaches 30% state of charge, it's now accepting 150 kilowatts. Now it holds 150 kilowatts from 30% all the way up to 57%. And at that point, the power draw drops to 100 kilowatts and continues charging between 100 and 106 kilowatts all the way up to 85% state of charge, which is excellent. It took us 37 minutes to reach 90% state of charge. And the Tycom was still accepting 90 kilowatts of power at 90% state of charge, which is excellent. The Tycon definitely has one of the best charging curves of any electric vehicle available today, even if you don't have the battery at the perfect temperature for DC fast charging. And it's definitely part of what makes the Tycon such a special electric vehicle. So there you have it. In 37 minutes, the Porsche Taycan 4S went from 5% to 90% state of charge, and the battery wasn't even at the perfect temperature to accept those ultra high DC fast charge rates. I think the Taycan is the best charging electric vehicle available today. I'd like to know what you think about that. So leave your comments in the section below. Let's have a conversation about Porsche Taycan charging. That's it for now. Please don't forget, click that subscribe button, tap the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. Thanks for watching.